Hi, I'm Mark Unger, producer of Roundtable. Because we find this presentation so special, we really would like for you to see this. Please watch. Art of creating something out of nothing, out of air, out of light. We always see the results of it, but rarely we have an opportunity to see the artist in his own environment. We rarely have a glimpse of magic that allows to create it. Today's single shot came to studio of one of the great New York for the artists, Artolino. I remember, great. But, <laughs> pretty yes. mediocre. Well, one of the uh, interesting sides of Arthur is humbleness. But apparently I do believe that he is one of the uh, very inspired photographers who is working with uh, black and white film photography. And uh, what personally for me is uh, so interesting about your works, is their narrative content. I always uh, was looking at photography as uh, a visual form of literature in a way, and uh, there are photographers who create in short poems, there are photographers who just keep out their diary in a way. You're a photographer who creating a complete novel in a picture, and uh, this novel often reminds me of uh, the traditions of classical literature of your home country, Russia. So, uh, this uh, works, it's sometimes not enough to see them, sometimes in the pretext, and that's why I wanted to ask I'm you I'm a piece of pictures because I want to illustrate what you just said about home country. And forgive me for going through the work, you know, like that, but it's pretty much evident of that picture was about home. Country. That picture was about home country. Can know? I can I see it? Yeah. This is Savannah. It's beautiful. Savannah Bowers, you know, she's a beautiful model, you know, very wonderful artist herself. And and this is about inheritance which you bring with yourself when you immigrate. Oh. You know. Indeed. I can see where it's coming, especially if you're coming from one of the former Soviet countries. Yeah, I just came from Soviet Union and I still consider myself Soviet in my mind, you know, because I grew up, you know, in Soviet culture and it's still very close to me, you know, and probably I will take it to support my life, you know, with me. But there are definitely changes which happening, you know, over time. But work will speak better, you know, probably than I do because I, I always believe that if I work with visual form, uh, I should show image and speak through the image. And if I was a writer, I would do writing, you know, so I have a chance to photograph. Well, that's actually what uh, is my perception of your works. It is uh, a video in some way and uh, it's very intense and very uh, big story in every uh, complete work uh, you have. So I'll show you something. Is it right? Oh, of course. So, so the crucifix uh, covered with the Soviet flag. Yeah, because Can you, you know history of revolution in 1917, everything was revolution. thrown down, you know, and uh, Basically, country went anti-Christ, you know, and 
Christianity was in Iran, pretty much forgotten for 70 years. Mm -hmm. And now we see a birth of it, you know, but I don't photograph a birth because I didn't witness it, I didn't learn about it, and I just hope that it goes in different directions than that direction. No, in principle, you will see uh, Russia after stop being Soviet. I haven't. No. I haven't seen it. This is uh, when, honestly speaking, you know, when Russia stopped being Soviet, this is when I made decisions, you know, to, uh, to stay at home here, you know, in the United States. For the United States. Yeah. Oh, uh, because new things could be scary and unknown, and maybe so, maybe I made maybe I made decisions which would be relevant to that. So uh, let's take this book. What this book says to you? Because there is there are so many layers and what. Uh, I can see in this walk, and I'm pretty sure everybody who look at it. Uh, it's different reading, it. which is great, you know. So I that, hope I hope to make a work which give you chance to have your own reading, you well, know. That's, uh, exactly what and happens. I'm just I try not to put explanation on the bottom of a picture, so you can project your own thoughts. And if you don't project any much of a thought. I fail. As a photographer, I fail. I believe so. If you have see something and you can find something that's relevant to some of your thoughts, I find that it's it's pretty good, you know, on my part. That I feel very satisfied with that. Oh, and but, uh, still, uh, it's possible to create something so complex and so multi-layered without having any idea of your own when you're creating this picture, something that uh, moved you to put together this particular visual, just as well as if you're reading a book. Of course, you would interpret it uh, in your own way, but uh, there would be something that uh, the writer put it originally in it, that uh, was an underlying reason for creating the book. So, let's take this one, for example. What uh, was the original idea that that was basically uh, pretty much about inspiration when, you know, when you away from homeland for a long time and it gives you inspiration for a while and after some time you lose source of inspiration, like you dry out. So and you start to look for, right? yeah. so you start to look for new inspiration, new force, which gives you this. So I start basically pay more attention to people around me, not to memories, but people around me, and new images start to come up, you know, like, like this one. There is a bicycle with a uh, kind of black and... Uh, well, he was, that looks everybody was a kid. Everybody can relate to this little tricycle. And the incredible pride of being, you know, uh, American, which has so many people around me, a real inspire me and give me force to move forward every single day, you know. And it's something what I admire and relate to. And a little bit more about immigration and we will take a rest from the subject. I'll show you. I did want to show you a picture which I'm trying to find. What's this one? In 1917, after the Civil War was almost over, opponents of revolution were leaving the country, white girls, and it was Pretty much a tradition when soldier cut folds of his coat, pick up some soil, put soil in a in a coat, and sew it on top of it, you know. And idea was that motherland always with me. It is with me. Oh, excellent. 
Yeah. This rock actually is from Mazatlan. It is? Yeah. I didn't bring it, but a friend of mine who traveled, who have a show in Moscow, uh, he brought this for me as a gift. He called me from Moscow and says that he's in the center of Moscow now. What I would like to have. I would love any souvenir I would like. He would bring it for me if he can afford it. I said, sure, pick up some rock. So he did. We were joking after that. I was saying, did you pick it up in JFK? Then we have a rare opportunity to see how a master walked on his uh, art. Uh, art kindly agreed to show us what he does when he is working in the studio on his uh, still lives. So what are you going to be working on today? Uh, okay. Beginning does look like a still life. Uh, it's pretty simple actually, you know, it all depends of idea which I bring to the studio. Because I always come with already with a certain idea, a certain concept of a picture. I don't photograph spontaneous, ever. But never basically, I photograph spontaneous. So, uh, there is nothing spontaneous about our meeting today. And I will try to basically show you example how how I make it work, you know, and... So, what is the underlying uh, idea of this? Uh, it's pretty much existential idea of a man's life, man's woman's life, of going through hardship, doing certain labor, which could be intellectual, could be physical, and trying to... just trying to live, you know, um, productive, productive life, rewarding life. And so this is piece which I obtained from Canadian artist Suzanne. She made it, you know, and I just want to have it for the last several years. Finally, I was able to do it, you know. And I wasn't able to afford it, you know, initially, but after I unloaded the truck for real, physically, I got a little bit money and I was able to buy it. You know, so I would like to take, you know, let's say like as many takes as I can because for me it feels very inspiring to see mm -hmm. and way how it could work. Uh, if, would you please, you know, come here, Sasha? Sure. Alex, if you stay here and May I ask you, you know, just move a little bit like that and uh, you look slightly up, like you look in the sunset, sunrise. Like that. Okay. Now, if this piece raised next to profile and I take a frame like that, mm -hmm. I have a man who is doing this labor, whatever he's that, thinking, writing, working here on the docks, you know, or I can, and pretty much I can put a hole in this dream, and and this is one of my favorite one of my favorite things of all time is Stairway to Heaven, Led Zeppelin. You know, I can only hear you on that. So we have this. So you basically typed in the image, real person prop, prop, and you communicate because there is some relevance of you with those things, you know, and at least there is a relevance for me, which I see, in, like, in, like, so it's very important to find the right model for it, you know, let's say something dramatic happened again, and I don't feel uplifted, and I feel down, and I feel that life is not happening as as I want it to be. So, and I have to work on life's terms. So what I do, I could bring it up and ask you, would you please give me a hand? Sure. You hold it here. Like this? Yeah. And you're trying to move carriage down by the ladder. Which is, so again, we have just this image. Yeah, so you need the movement or you just... Uh... No. This is it, but movement getting built in a person, in a viewer's mind. Because 
any viewer realize that it's very hard to put wheel and go down this ladder. So, you know, thought of a viewer add to the image. Like, I skip move, actual physical movement, dynamic of movement. I just put symbols, wheel and a ladder. And view, and I hope that viewer will give a little thought, even without thought, just immediately would say that, oh, you know what, this is pretty hard task to move it down. You know? But again, and as the day start, you sleep, you rest, you wake up, you see sunrise, and and you feel like go up the ladder and reach your dream, and you willing to work real hard on life and improve it, you know, and build it different way. Did very interesting symbolism. Well, probably I'm lazy enough because I keep on thinking about keeping one of the buckets on top of the ladder so you wouldn't have to pick it up. <laughs> you don't have to move, you know, both of them in the same time next time. Mm -hmm. But it's possible that you can leave one and you go on the next one, it's just one bucket. Is this point you shoot few images, a like couple images. Absolutely. You know? Mm -hmm. You can shoot image where it's just still life, you know, where it's empty and... Let me take a look at it uh, from the point of view of the camera. Please do. Yeah. And if you decide to use my camera, it's pretty simple because it has very strong legs and pretty much it's now there. And you focus like in the good old times, and I love new times, you know, and I don't have to focus, but I just... If you would please, you take a peek, you know. That's pretty much, you know, how it's going to look like. Oh, I have to admit that's the, the, the first time I'm actually looking in the viewfinder of the world of Hasselblad. I've looked in uh, other uh, medium formats, but not in this legendary machine. And as I understand, that was also a very specific choice for you, right? You know, um, company who produced those cameras wouldn't like it, because I make it like a joke that for me, for the last 20 years, very sometimes it become hustle and blood. <laughs> Wow, it's you know. indeed the best word play about it. But I do love this camera, you know, it's very easy to work with. It's pretty simple and even such such a dummy as me, you know, I can figure it out how to use it, you know, because speaking of digital equipment, I really wish I can learn how to use it, but I find hard time for me to work with electronics, you know, you know and modern age technology. And But I very much admire people doing it, you know. And I see that with digital camera, it will be so many possibilities to produce so many more fun images than I do, you know, because my process is pretty simple. I would take one, two rolls. If it's still life, I take one roll. So basically all together, I would make three, four frames of it just to have extra spare negatives. You know, and uh, if I work with this person, I shoot about two rolls of film, you know, it's 24 tapes, you know, so as as a photographer yourself, you know that it's, it's not so many after all, especially when I'm trying to work not with variety, but with certainly one frame, and I just try to basically execute it, right? Like, like if I try to photograph, I would, I would shoot your hand like that mm -hmm. for a dozen times because in my mind I know that your hand is moving slightly, holding it. So I try to get it just right, you know, there. And I'm not. I very much love when model bring yourself, herself, himself in a shot. 
and help me to make it because it's very much collaborative process, you know, of photographer and model. And sometimes it feels that model does more than I do because my work is very simple, but model's input, crucial, well, unless it's a still life. Well, since you called for me as a volunteer, let's give it a try. And, okay. So, what do I need to do? Okay. It would be great just if you can You know, it would be great to raise you a little bit lower down, but it's very difficult to do it here. See, uh, I would, uh, you, you yes, for me to step, myself. step closer to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, step closer to me. You know. So, how much uh, lower you need me to be? I see your hands. You can just, on the level of your hand, I would love to see, like, this hand, mm -hmm. left one. I'd love to see your profile. Okay, that's actually pretty easy. How about that? Perfect. And if you look up, so this is pretty much how it will be. Okay. And if you just look up okay. and look a little bit towards towards this column, you know, but uh, yeah, because okay. yeah, but on a picture it's gonna look like you're still looking at the ladder. No matter that you look in a different direction slightly. You know, okay. like 100 degrees slightly. Uh, a little bit less, just a door frame. Okay. Yeah. And that's exactly how it would be. Rust. I don't know what the camera is going to do that wrong. Okay. So, just how it would be. Uh, you should be a little bit higher. Yeah. That's it. Let's just go under and just knee. Okay. So you should be a little bit higher. Yeah. Okay. Can you come a little bit lower as you go? Okay. Take the back. Here, here. And, and I shoot. You're gonna flip. You forgot to plug the camera. Okay, we try it now. It's a help sometimes to plug in your flat. And there it does. It works in much more. When you mentalism between you and a ladder and big buckets, which are very small but that big, you know, you can see whole carriage. You know. And now one, you know, which for people who won't see you, just wonder who you you look in the camera, just come a little bit closer and look at the camera. Sometimes it's good, like if you look in an eternity for me, it's good when you look a little above me, just slightly above my, my forehead. You can look at my forehead. Yeah. yeah. And basically every thing, you know, could be, have like a recording for me in your eyes, you know, where you look at what you feel and stuff. If I see, if I feel it about idealistic image, but I see some tightness and you look at it be down, it look more like make something nostalgic, you know, and I shoot it anyway. So you bring a lot in a shoot. So as a model, as a model. So whole I, I always say that there is not like, in a studio, it's just like trying to make something out of nothing. No, there's beautiful things which made by other artists or craftsmen, you know, in some cases. And it was a beautiful artist who make it. There is incredible people who come to work with me because I meet them, I invite them to work with me. And I'm very fortunate, sometimes they agree, you know. 
and sometimes they come back and, and I try to work with the same people so we build a relationship of makers of something good. I sometimes I joke and I say I try to make images that you can show your grandma, you know. Especially at the beginning we just meet, you know, and I feel very cautious about and I don't feel comfortable, you know, when I shoot notes, you know. I still don't. And I basically like images not about physical beauty, but about beauty of of a human mind. Like going up or down, or going or staying in the middle or freezing or going this way. So that's probably you know? the secret of uh, the narrative in your uh, photos. You are always photographing human mind in a way. I, I hope so. Yes. You know. Absolutely. And oh, uh, after all this conversation, it probably uh, pays for us to look at your works one more time for a few seconds, just as everything we know about your process and your way of thinking to compare it. Can I show you just one image? Absolutely. With this process. Just one Absolutely. image and we talk about it. Absolutely. Let me making images and even more fortunate is there are some people who appreciate it you know and I I feel very grateful you know that I meet people like that you know or images and I'm very happy to hear that somebody buy image and will get it for me as a gift and take it back to Africa or Europe. It just feels very exciting. That's the best feeling for the artist. They all know that. I guess so. Thank you, Art. You're well, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So you're tired of this labor. And now, you don't think about being tired, you just look up. And there's something idealistic in there. I hope you found that worth watching as much as I did. I'm Mark Unger for Roundtable. Thanks for watching.